So children, uh, in the last part, you had studied about the post-fertilization events. So in that, uh, we had studied about how the embryo is formed. We studied, started with the double fertilization and the different stages of embryo development. We studied how, uh, what is the pro-embryo stage, two-cell stage, apical cell and basal cell. Then the globular embryo, which leads to the formation of the heart-shaped embryo where the cotyledon starts appearing and finally the mature embryo which has a radical and the pre-mule with the meristem, meristematic tissues are there present in it which is which divides very frequently and then we have studied about the cotyledons that is the structure of a mature embryo of a dicot plant. Now let's study a little bit more de the detail of what is the structure of dicot embryo over here and this is the structure of monocotyledonous embryo. Embryo. So let's study these two in detail. Now, when the embryo develops, that is, you know that angiosperms, we can classify that based on the number of cotyledons present into dicot or monocot. In dicots, they have two, it has two cotyledons, and in monocots, the plants that is rice, wheat, maize has one cotyledon in it. So that's how we can classify the angiosperm, that is a flowering plant. Here the dicot is nothing but the mango, all that comes under the dicot plant. Now in the, that is the, the structure of a dicotyledonous embryo, very very important. The main structure is nothing but, it has a embryonal axis, this is the axis over here and the important part is, uh, above the embryonal axis, you have the part known as epicotyle. Above the embryonal axis, here in the center, I told you we have studied in the previous one. This is a plumule, which is nothing but consists of a lot of meristematic tissues, which give rise to the shoot system with the meristematic tissues. Just after that, that is between this plumule and the embryonal axis, you have the cellular, that is a structure known as epicotyle. Epicotyle growth and all, it will help the growth of the epicotyle. It will result will be helpful during the germination of the seed. Whether the seed decides whether the seed will germinate, the germination is epigeal germination or hypogeal germination. That we will be studying in the later part of the chapter. Now, this part here, it is these are the they are nothing but the cotyledons over here, and this structure in between the two cotyledons, these are the dicot, so these are the cotyledons. And in between the cotyledons, there are many tissues present over here. This is nothing but the plumule which gives rise to the shoot system. Alright. And in between that, this is the embryonal axis. So, above the embryonal axis, this part is known as epicotyle. Below the embryonal axis, this part is known as hypocotyle. And this hypocotyle will be extended towards the lower end of the embryo. And this whole structure, this is known as radical. Radical is nothing but it gives rise to the root system. So when the seed germinates, okay, and after germination when it is growing, so it will have the shoot system and the root system. The root system grows under the ground, shoot, shoot system grows above the ground. So in the shoot system, you have the epicotyle and the plumule, this is the embryonal axis. Below the embryonal axis, you have the hypocotyle. Like the epicotyle, hypocotyle growth also will tell what kind of germination takes place in the uh, seed whether it is epigeal germination or hypogeal germination. Then, you have the radical which gives rise to the root system and the root uh, radical is protected by certain cells over here. We call it as root cap. It is found in mango and all that. So, it, actually the product, uh, that is, uh, it gives a protection to the root, the primary root and then the secondary root and tertiary roots will develop from that. So, these, this is the structure of a Dicotyledonous embryo. So, what are the main parts? So, please draw the diagram in your notebook neatly and then label the part that is very very important. So, this is the like half eutetic. Suppose this is the two cotyledons over here and this is the shoot system, this is the root system over here. So, this is the axis. So, this part is the epicotyle that is embryonal axis, thus above is epicotyle, this is the plumule. And below the embryonal axis, this will be the hypocotyle 
and then below that gives a radical. So epicotyl plumule is this in the middle between two cotyledons. These are the two cotyledons. That is a dicot. Then you have the hypocotyl and then hypocotyl extends to radical and radical is covered by the root cap. Now let's study what is the structure of the monocotyledonous embryo. That is what is the ploidy of that? It is also these both are diploid in nature, two and two sets of chromosome. Okay. Now it is quite different, so please do the you can analyze it comparatively. So here if you see this is the embryonal axis, it divides the plant that is above the shoot system, below the root system is formed. So that is meant by the embryonal axis. So in the from the in case of monocotyledonous uh, embryo, this embryonal axis, the cotyledon, there is only single cotyledon. Cotyledon grows on the lateral side of the plumule node. It grows on the lateral side. This is the cotyledon. The name of the cotyledon for monocot is nothing but scutellum. Scutellum. Scutellum is nothing but cotyledon. What is the purpose of cotyledon? Cotyledons will provide nourishment. It has got a supply of food in it. Minerals and all are there. Lipids are there. Proteins and all. So it gives the nourishment to the growing embryo. So that is the main purpose. So the cotyledon of a monocot seed or embryo is known as cutellum. It is found as a lateral shield like growth on the side. This is the embryonal axis. Now as I told you embryonal axis, below the embryonal axis you have this part is nothing but this part below the embryonal axis. This is a radical. Radical extends into root cap. Root cap protects the radical. So you have the uh, below the uh, embryonal axis you have radical root cap and root cap is covered by a sheet like a covered structure and that covering structure is known as polyorhiza. So please understand it properly that the polyorhiza main purpose if it is found below the in the maize and all maize, wheat, rice they all are monocot. So below that it has the structure known sheet like structure known as polyorhiza and this polyorhiza when the seeds germinate it remains under the soil it is non green in color now you come to the upper part there is no hypocotyl or epicotyl so the parts under the below the embryonal axis is radical root cap polyorhiza covers the radical below the embryonal axis now look at the parts above the embryonal axis so above the embryonal axis you have this structure over here this is nothing but which is covered by a leaf primordia that is the baby leaf which grows, uh, which is, uh, which can synthesize food du uh, during, uh, that is when it comes out of the soil, it starts the photosynthesis. So this middle part, which is covered by, which has lots of extrematic tissue, this is the shoot apex. And this on the side, it is the epiblast, all the structure, it gives a nourishment to the embryo. And then, you can see here, this whole thing, it is nothing but the cotyledon there, and then, not the cotyledon, it is known as polyoptite. Polyoptite. So poly, what is polyoptite? Polyoptite covers the shoot apex. Shoot apex is nothing but it gives to the shoot system. And then this part, polyoptite will come out of the soil during the germination, whereas polyorhiza will remain under the soil during the germination of the seed. And the cotyledon of a monocot plant is known as cutellum. So it is found on the lateral side, it is not along with the structure of the other part. So this is the structure of a mature, that is a monocotyledonous embryo. Very important part, so please learn it. This is also good to be asked for the three mark diagrammatic question and you have to label the parts, identify the part. What is this part known as, what is the function, polyoptile, it covers the shoot apex. Okay, and then you have this is the embryonal axis, below the embryonal axis there is radical, radical gives rise to the root system which is in turn covered by the root cap protection so that it because it has to go under the soil and to that is in between the rock and all hard surface and all so root cap just gives a protection to radical and this whole thing is covered by a sheet like structure which is known as polyorhiza. So these are the parts, please see the comparative analysis, draw the diagram neatly and label it and learn. So I will be just, uh, you can see the slides and you can understand the whole structure once again. I hope you have understood this well. Please label and then write the notes and submit it.
so children the, let's summarize what we have learned today so first we had studied about double fertilization followed by triple fusion then the formation of endosperm then development of embryo two types of uh, embryos we had learned so first we'll be study we'll see the study the structure of monocotyledonous embryo then the structure of dicotyledonous embryo now look at the slides so we started with the first one so uh, stage that is of uh, fertilization once the pollen tube reaches the synergid it releases two male gametes into the cytoplasm of a synergid one of the male gamete fuses with the egg nucleus to form a diploid cell known as zygote the ploidy of the male gamete is haploid and the ploidy of the egg cell is also haploid so male gamete fuses with the egg cell to form zygote which is diploid in nature and this process is known as syngamy the other male gamete fuses with the moves towards the center and it fuses with the polar nuclei in the central cell there are two polar nuclei so just before fertilization two polar nuclei fuses to form the secondary nucleus so the ploidy of that is diploid so the other male gamete fuses with the secondary nucleus or the polar nuclei to form primary endosperm nucleus so the ploidy of that will be triploid 3n so that process is known as triple fusion the both the syngamy and the triple fusion occur simultaneously so this process is known as double fertilization which is an important characteristic features of all angiosperms flowering plants then soon after this process the synergid starts degenerating at the micropylar end and the antipodals will start degenerating at the chalazal end the function of the synergid is also to provide the nourishment to nourishment to the uh, egg cells and all then the central cell gets converted that is it undergoes division and then it forms primary endosperm cell or pec and this is primary endosperm nucleus which is triploid in nature and it is known as pen the zygote later develops into embryo and the primary endosperm nucleus later develops into the endosperm endosperm that is which gives nourishment to the developing embryo now this is again double fertilization what we had studied so here it is a zygote which is formed that is a male gamete fusing with the egg cell to form zygote which is diploid in nature and in the central cell you can see three cells over here that is two of the polar nuclei and one of the male gamete resulting in a triploid endosperm or primary endosperm nucleus so it is a complex mechanism of fertilization in flowering plants angiosperms especially and it is the joining of female gametophyte with the two male gametes one sperm nucleus unites with the egg to form zygote whereas the other fuses with the two polar nuclei to form endosperm that is the which provides nourishment to the growing embryo so this whole process is known as double fertilization so what we had learned one of the male gamete fuses with the egg nucleus to form a diploid cell called zygote this process is called syngamy so the ploidy you can calculate it like that male gamete haploid egg cell is also haploid so these two will fuse to give a diploid zygote which later develops into embryo in triple fusion the second male gamete fuses with the two polar nuclei or the secondary nucleus at the center to produce a triploid primary endosperm nucleus two polar nuclei we each of them which are haploid it fuses with the male gamete which is a haploid and it gives rise to triploid primary endosperm nucleus or pen and this process is known as triple fusion so syngamy and triple fusion occur simultaneously so this process is known as double fertilization so now there are some questions which will be asked on this how you have to calculate the number of chromosomes in the endosperm so for that as i told you before when you look into the embryo sac all the cells are haploid in nature except the polar nuclei which fuses to form diploid secondary nucleus the antipodals are haploid in nature synergists are haploid in nature and the egg cells are haploid in nature that means if there are 24 chromosomes present in the 
plant like monopod plant like rice the haploid number of chromosomes in each will be half of that that will be 12 so keep that in your mind and you have to do the calculation there are there will be many questions which will be asked on this basis you have to find out the haploidy that is haploidy of endosperm or the antipodals or the egg cell or the zygote etc so for example one of the question here the myocyte of rice has 24 chromosomes how many chromosomes are present in its endosperm so you know the myocyte of rice which is given that is 24 chromosome so therefore the number of chromosomes in the that is male gamete will be haploid because it is formed by meiotic or reduction division so it will have 12 chromosomes now the number of chromosomes in two polar nuclei it will be 12 plus 12 which will be equal to 24 therefore the number of chromosomes in its endosperm you can calculate is 24 plus 12 that is 36 chromosome now can you tell me what will be the ploidy of antipodals the ploidy of antipodals will be that is haploid that will be also equal to 12 chromosomes what will be the ploidy of the zygote zygote is diploid so zygote will be carrying will be having 24 chromosomes so that's how you have to do the calculations when the questions are asked in this order so now let's see what are the post fertilization events in post fertilization events there is development of endosperm from primary endosperm nucleus the development of embryo from the zygote then the development of seed from the ovule and finally the development of fruit from the ovary so we are going to study the first two events in this we have studied the first two events in this class that is a development of endosperm and development of embryo now look at this diagram this is a first step development of endosperm from primary endosperm nucleus which is triploid in nature so this is the oospore or that is a zygote and this is the space for the endosperm present over here so first the endosperm undergoes look at this diagram it undergoes free nuclear division that means there is no cytokinesis no cell wall formation so it divides mitotically to form thousands of endosperm nuclei and then they don't form any wall so it is known as free endosperm nucleus or free nuclear endosperm after this what happened the cell wall starts developing so this stage of endosperm development is known as the cellular endosperm so in endosperm development there are two stages one is known as free nuclear endosperm and second one is known as cellular endosperm and then the endosperm the oospore divisions will be have will also take place simultaneously to form the embryo and these are the cellular embryo which you have seen it so the cellular endosperm that is a primary endosperm first divides into two and finally divides into eight so all are mitotic division and it leads to the formation of the cellular endosperm so cell wall formation occurs immediately after division subsequent division also is accomplished by cell plate formation as a result endosperm becomes cellular from the beginning and here this endosperm mainly this uh, development of endosperm happens before the development of embryo because endosperm provides nourishment to the developing embryo that is why first this happens it happens prior to the embryo development and it occurs in many of all the dicot plants as well as in the monocot plants now this is the image to show you how the endosperm with the embryo and with the nucleus looks inside an ovule this is the outer integument which you have studied, inner integument and this is the nucleus. Nucleus, what is the ploidy? Nucleus is also diploid in nature. And this is the cellular endosperm over here. And the, what is the ploidy of that? That is triploid, 3N. And this is the embryo which is diploid and present at the micropylar end. This is a chalazal end. And these are the integuments, outer integument and inner integument. So this is how the ovule looks. That is after the fertilization this is a example of a seed which shows the endosperm which provides food for the developing embryo or the plant and another feature you can see this is an example of the coconut tender coconut tender coconut it has the outer the outer portion that is a green color which you see outer part of the coconut it is nothing but exoka then you have the fibrous husk which is in the middle it forms a mesocarp and the heart shell forms the endocarp then you can see the white kernel white kernel is nothing but endosperm or meat endosperm 
which we eat all right and then you can you also have seen the water inside the water inside the coconut is nothing but the free nuclear endosperm so the white kernel is a cellular endosperm and the water is a free nuclear endosperm next what is the function of the endosperm it is the most nutritive tissue for the developing embryo in the angiosperm and in gymnosperms like pinus and all pine cone the female gameto it represents the female gametophyte whereas a female gametophyte in angiosperm differentiates before fertilization and is haploid the endosperm is a product of fertilization and is usually triploid after double fertilization what is the egg called it is called the zygote and the fusion products of polar nuclei and the second male gamete is termed as the primary endosperm nucleus then it this process is seen in all the angiosperm but it does not some angiosperm does not form endosperm they are the families of orchidaceae that is orchids they don't form the endosperm then podostemaceae and trapeaceae these both are aquatic plants or hydrophytic plants philic plants which will not produce the endosperm at all next the second stage we'll see how the embryos are developed in a dicot plant so this is the zygote over here so the zygote in the first stage it will undergo asymmetric mitotic division zygote is diploid in nature to when it undergoes asymmetric means it will form a large basal cell and a one apical cell the basal cell is this it will be dividing it will undergo the transverse division first then the vertical division forming a series of cells a group of 6 to 10 cells, cells and this is called suspensor okay and the first cell of the um, suspensor towards the my this is a micropylar end it is known as haustorium whereas the last cell of the suspensor towards the chalazal end is called hypophysis this hypophysis later develops into radical radical which later develops into the root system and then after this the smaller that is a this is a basal cell and this is the apical cell so this basal cell it has formed the suspensor and all later the apical cell undergoes one vertical division and later it undergoes transverse division and first it will form a uh, it will form four embryonal cell or it is known as quadrant stage here and then later this again divides to form eight celled embryo or octet stage in the octet stage the four cells at the apex give rise to plumule that means it will form that there is here it will form the plumule which gives rise to the future shoot system and the other four cells gives rise to the hypocotyle that is hypocotyle followed by the radical which forms the root system now so here this is a suspensor and then there are certain stages here when the this is the pro embryo stage where it is two celled here it forms like a spherical so we call this stage as globular embryo later globular embryo, embryo starts dividing and it forms heart shaped embryo this is heart shaped embryo stage and then here you can see the cotyledon dicot these two are the cotyledons which has started developing and this in the center it is having lots of meristematic fast dividing repeatedly dividing cells meristematic cells and this is a plumule then you can see this part this is a radical and which gives rise to the root system this is a plumule over here which has lot of meristematic tissues and these are the two cotyledons and this stage is known as torpedo stage so this is what we have seen that is the angiosperm flowering plant and this is the ovule over here and the nucleus endosperm nucleus in the middle integuments and then how the zygote which is at the micropylar end forms a terminal cell and the basal cell again it undergoes transverse and vertical division to form the pro embryo pro embryo forms a suspensor this is a heart shaped stage okay so here it is a pro cambium that is a different cells means how it is dividing repeatedly and then this is the heart shaped embryo having two cotyledons plumule and the radical and this is a suspensor and this is the whole structure how it develops inside the ovule next in the end we are going to study what is the structure of dicot dicot embryo and monocot embryo this is the structure of a dicot embryo the dicot embryo it is the 
here you can see imaginary line just think this is as an embryonal axis it has embryonal axis and cotyledon so this is like a um, dicot uh, embryo for example beans peas and all that so this part is nothing but it is known as a cotyledon the part between the cotyledon and this embryonal axis here we have the epicotyle okay and the middle part here that is between the two embry uh, cotyledons this part is where lot of meristematic tissues and leaf primordia will be present this is the plumule which later develops into the shoot system and these are the two cotyledon cotyledon what is the function it provides nourishment to the growing embryo and here if this is embryonal axis the part below the embryonal axis is known as hypocotyle and hypocotyle is followed by the lower part that is a radical and radical is covered in few plants with a root cap now this whole radical and the root cap gives rise to the root system so the parts of a dicot embryo you have the cotyledon plumule and this part is nothing but it is known as a epicotyle then below the embryonal axis there is hypocotyle radical and root cap so the diagram will be given to you and you have to identify the parts and state the functions of each so please draw the diagram neatly and label it another one this is a monocot embryo like maize rice wheat so there is the structure there is slightly it is different so monocot as a name suggests it has one cotyledon the cotyledon in a monocot is known as cutellum and if this is a imaginary embryonal axis the lower part in the embryonal axis this is the hypocotyle region and this is the epicotyle that is in the case of we have seen in dicot so here this is the lower that is below the embryonal uh, axis we have the radical radical is covered by the root cap and below the root cap the entire radical root cap is covered by a sheath like structure known as coleorrhiza coleorrhiza is found only in the monocot embryo and then look at the upper region that is in bit above the embryonal axis you have the epiblast over here and then this is the coleo uh, the shoot apex this middle part that is the the part which gives rise to the leaves and all that it forms the shoot that is the shoot apex and this shoot apex is covered by another sheet on top it is known as coleoptile very very important diagrammatic question function will be asked so the cotyledon in a monocot embryo is known as cutellum the shoot is covered by coleoptile this is a shoot apex and then below the embryonal axis you have the radical which is followed by root cap and it is covered by the coleorrhiza so this is the entire the structure of dicot embryo and monocot embryo hope all of you have understood this i want all of you to write the notes and draw all the diagrams neatly and solve the problems based on the ploidy of uh, endosperm or antipodals so thank you children